Welcome back, everyone. I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and then we are back with Mr. President Glenn. But right now, Class 2 Senate elections have concluded. It is November 21st, 1972. And shh, everyone be quiet. I can't hear the TV. But, of course, we have Election Day in 1972 as well. And now, the presidential election is what everyone is tuning into the TV and radio to learn about as the polls are closed. As the night goes on and the votes are counted and reported, it soon becomes clear who will become the next sitting, or who will be sitting in the White House for the next four years. President Glenn. All right. Don't mind me and don't mind the depth. We are just going to be ready for anything, which we will get more political power, stability, and more support because we desperately need that political power. Thanks to our initiative. The United States of America and her space program are as prepared as can be for the dangers of venturing far out into the great void. With the finalization of these great advancements in technology, spacecraft design, and procedure, it seems as though no astral disaster can prove to be too challenging, or any distance too great to overcome. America, her astronauts, and the space program are aware of the great difficulties that lie ahead, but now they need not to fear. Houston may be assured that there will be no problems. We actually get some more public support, which would be nice. Very, very nice. What do we have over here? Basic civil rights legislation, that's good. Like black arms trading, whatever. Less passion for liberty. Also, to help offset some of the debt, I, I deleted some of my divisions, but that didn't do very much for us, so. Hmm. It is what it is. A trillion in debt eventually. Whatever. As long as we go to space, that's all that matters. We only $390 million. Hmm. And, but we're investing in the Diana program, which is great, 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 which is actually hurting our political power gain as well. 0.21 a day, but once this is gone, we'll actually get 0.2 more, which would be nice. Actually, let's take a look at the Senate. Hey, you've got 31 Republicans, 13 Democrats, 25 Center NPP, and 31 far-right Yaquis. If you want to read this, candidates and voters, you've done America proud. And the polls are updated. No one cares about that. Cool. Let's see. Cooper, huh? The presidential election season is over. Hail to the chief, whoever it may be. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's see. Askew. George H.W. Bush. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Weird guy. Alan Cranston. Anyone else here interesting that we should know about? Newberger, of course. Henry Jackson. Anyone else around here? Republican George McGovern. No, nah, not really too much. Weapon improvement 10. Cool. Yeah, we kind of close this out. We don't really need to see that anymore. Cool. Let's go ahead and grab some advanced anti air equipment and have a good time. Ready for anything. The stars beckon. We have persisted through budget cuts, doubting congressmen, and the humiliation of the Nazi moon landing to retake our spot as a leading nation in the exploration of space. NASA's efforts have met with success after success, and we must ride the wave of momentum even farther afield while enthusiasm is still high. The administration is abuzz with an energy not seen in years, and in a sense that we are on our way to greatness as we reach out to touch the stars. Beautiful. Point for a day. Not bad, not great. Let me spend more money. <laughs> Come on, at least the GDP is looking not bad. But that national debt, oh my goodness, how fast are we getting that? It's so sad that Iberia is no longer here. Ah, oh, Tehran. Ah, oh, Republic of India. I wish we could get more events, like, where we can increase, like, trade with other nations. Maybe with the Chinese. Maybe even with the Democratic Republic of Vietnam, just because they don't like the Japanese. And even though we don't like authoritarian socialists in America. As long as they stay over there, maybe we could trade with them, you know? Why can't we get more trade deals with Spain or Portugal or the United Kingdom? I would like to see options like that, but happy 1973, my friends. It's going to be a great year, except for the debt, but that's okay. Hey, look, almost 900 billion in terms of GDP. Hey, 900 billion in terms of GDP, we got it. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Can't do that. Yep, let's grab some Scout Helicopter Companies 2s. Now, we could be making some divisions, but that costs money. And we don't have money right now. Goodbye. Actually, I could probably just delete my entire army, to be honest with you. Military spending? Well... Let's keep at least one group here. 30 guys over there. Oh, never mind. We have one army here. I want to keep the Marines. Actually, how many divisions? Battalions. You have 12 combat width, 6 battalions. You guys are... Well, same thing. Ever onwards. Semper pro prorsum. Okay. Hey, look at that. We got positive political power now. John Glenn secures a second term. The stars beckon. On to the red planet. Yes. The lessons of Gemini... The heartbreak of Apollo. We do want to cleanse the government. In the uh, clean government is the best government. Oh, we always oh, have that stuff too. That's right. Cool. We can do this stuff, but the Iranian stuff is kind of bugged right now. Whatever. Oh, harming, harvesting uranium. Well, we can do that all stuff later. We control the power. Nuclear stockpile will go up. Rapidly improve stability. Early warning system. Rejevic. 
Well, the heartbreak of Apollo. The worst day of John Glenn's life was the day of the Germans landed on the moon. The pain and anguish that brought the long days of sorrow and depression gave him a resolve never to fall behind again in the race for glory among the stars. We cannot allow ourselves to be held back by past failures. Instead, we must learn the lessons of those failures and allow them to propel us forward. And I don't want to forget this stuff. Because we still have a mission. We have 61% preparedness for Diana 1. Cutting edge tanks greatly decrease the cost of our... Oh, yeah. Oh, heck yeah. But let's go ahead and do 40 million... Where's 50? Yeah, I like that one. 50... Upgrade to the Gemini Mark II suit. Increase preparedness by 10. That's not bad. I like that. It doesn't cost us money. So we're probably going to grab this immediately. Because that's... Ooh, boy. The Florida Field Speech. Senator, Congressman, Scientists, Engineers, Distinguished Guests, and Ladies and Gentlemen. <clears throat> Before my election, I spoke on many subjects. But foremost among them, I spoke of the need for America to keep looking upwards. We are the descendants of explorers, pioneers, and settlers. It is our nature to look beyond tomorrow. I said that it is our calling to chase a horizon and to keep pushing it ever onwards. Many of you agreed with me. Together, we took the first step, and once again, we are lifting our gaze to the skies. Once again, America is headed to space. Since then, we've taken many more steps. NASA has been strengthened and remolded into a leading light for science and expo exploration in this country and the world. We recruited the best scientists, the brightest engineers, and a team of astronauts so that is second to none, and we've given them enough funding to get to work. That work has already borne fruit. A great many steps have already been taken. We are closer than ever to the stars. It is time to avenge Apollo and take back our rightful place as the pioneers and explorers of the solar system. Our Artemis program has made further strides, great strides, towards that objective, and will extend our reach further than ever before. I can say now with confidence that America will soon put a man on the moon. While we will not be there first, our conquest of the Earth's natural satellite will show our intent to look beyond tomorrow once again. We will be pioneers, we will be the explorers of our solar system, we will conquer the moon, and once we get there... We will still look to the horizon. It is our calling. Stability, political power, great. I want to do that immediately, which I will. But I'm also going to get more money. Finally, we got some more political power. We're going to grab joint testing programs, because that's going to be good. NASA approval is at 13%. Whatever. Good, good, good. Come on. We get 0.4 a day. There we go. Joint testing. Get us that money. Thank goodness. Too bad there's not like a research you can do that lowers the cost of military spending. That'd be kind of cool. But that's just me. Only $700 billion in terms of debt. That's all. But we have civil rights. We got some social security stuff. We got an acceptable minimum wage. A decrease in... Oh! A decrease in poverty thanks to our greater poverty relief efforts as well as expansion of our civilian economy. The poverty rate has increased significantly enough to be notable internationally as our government congratulates itself for its efforts. The first official statement projections on this impact of this improved popular prosperity are files stating that people are able to access superior goods. Econ economic opportunity shall be greatly increased and our workforce shall be capable of greater and greater feats. We went from 15 to 25% poverty rate to 10 to 15%. Oh my goodness, yes. Reichsminister Hill... Hevel murdered. Oh. The German Eagle falls down once again. Oh, yeah. Let's go look at this. Okay, so it didn't help us that much with annual deficit. We got more income. It looks like a little bit more. Quite a bit. Actually, quite a bit more. Yeah, that's not bad. Even though our expenditures are way too much. And it's all due to civilian spending. Especially with the generous employee subsidies and oil crisis. Ooh, we could slow down that. 0.35 a day. We're still positive for now. We might get hit a little harder later on. I think for now. Let's not raise the debt up too much because it is still going to go up by quite a bit. I don't want to cut it because that will lower our political power gain by 0 0.15. 0 0.35 is not bad though. The Lessons of Gemini. The Gemini program was one of our greatest successes giving us our first ex practical experience with man man spaceflight and the first taste of the stars from President Glenn. While this opportunity may have been squandered and the lessons of the program have not been forgotten if we wish to continue onwards and upwards. On the back of Gemini program, we will achieve greatness and now we shall surpass those heights once more. The Ghost of Apollo, I still can't shake it completely. The two engineers were, the, were three beers into their evening at the officer's mess. Don't get me wrong, I love being back. Nothing can compete with working on a space mission, but I'm still waiting for another shoe to drop. What other shoe, man? I don't, I'm not sure what I follow. I keep forgetting that you weren't here for Apollo. Okay, okay. I'll try to explain. The last time we tried something like this, we lost. Plain and simple. We were too slow to start, and we couldn't make the progress we needed in time to compete with the Germans. We did our best and failed. That stings for a lot of people, me included. To make matters worse, it seemed like the whole program lost its importance in that moment. The second Kölner set foot on the moon, our launches started getting pushed back, then cancelled. Funding dried up almost overnight. Instead of pioneers, we were also rands. We were also rands. And that made it plain and uncomfortable truth. Apollo is never about science or human achievement. That was just a window dressing for a pissing contest with the Nazis. How else do you explain the sudden loss of interest after they were first? <clears throat> I understand that that was a hard time, but we've got our guy in the big chair now. Glenn's serious about all of this. I know, I know, I just can't shake it completely. We'll get it right this time. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Gemini Mark II suit. Wait, did we not? I thought I already clicked on that. I'm, I'm pretty sure I clicked on that because we saved up stuff. 
Maybe it was a Mark I suit that we got. Maybe the Mark II suit is really where it's at. Uh, fine, I'll do that. Don't hurt me, though. Oh, man. Tesla rockets. 76% of the way there. We can get 76, 86. Go for the Tesla rockets, and then we'll launch it. That'd be fun. Jet Propulsion Labs. Decrease the cost of our manned missions. That'll be nice. That'll be very, very nice. Next up, we got maybe stuff in military funding, maybe. That might be good. Because these uh, top three, they're okay. They're not great. Ooh, instead of the nuclear stuff. Build in Indiana, Missouri for now. Keep building more civilian factories. That'll help not really lower the cost of anything, but whatever. But now we get 0.4 a day. 0.35 to 0.4 isn't that much. In terms of GDP or debt, it doesn't help us that much. Four days left, 14, 10 days, not bad. Not bad. And 10% approval rating, not bad. Could be much worse. Hey, we got him. We got him. Six days, seven days. We got about eight days for that. Not bad. And then joint testing programs. Remove that so we get more output and cap, which is not bad. Even though there's not much we can do about that, let's go ahead and read something else. Upgrading the infrastructure. Ooh, better army professionalism. Yes, sir. Those two words seem to be the ultimate lesson in the history of the military theory. It's not the quality of guns or weaponry that make an army, but discipline. Those men that hold until the death because of a command will be the ones to claim victory. In a world of absolute war, a brave new weaponry, it seems that we've often forgot that simple fact. An army cannot function without those two words. Luckily, anti-corruption programs in the army and new boot camps have brought our army one step closer to the ultimate goal of Spartanic valor. No longer will the men defect or serve political masters. They will serve their generals and nothing less. Cool. Nice. Not that it really matters right now, but that's okay. Call on the country. Public support will increase significantly. Operation, or not Operation, but Project Viking. Probe the right plan. We'll gain a reward, reward boost for our manned missions. Yes. Unmanned probes are not flashy, cannot think for themselves, and cannot be the face of the space program. However, they offer several other advantages. The main one being that we can test out our systems without having to be unnecessarily risky and risk the lives of our astronauts. We're planning the most ambitious exploration project in the history, and it would be foolish to embark on this great journey without making at least a few trial runs. Directing more funding to our probe division will allow us to develop the sort of data we need for the greatest possible landing we can get. Great. Great, great, great. My apologies about that, but I had to attend to something else, and I didn't want the audio to bleed over into the video but let's go ahead and do some support weapons seven and we must keep an eye on this and the lessons of gemini which we did want to choose project viking beautiful so now we can maybe test launch diana but i have a good feeling uh, 70, 80. Hmm. <clears throat> we've launched things before with less support but hmm, 86 seven, five, five, seven. Uh, let's give it just a little bit more time it's only 73 right so we've got enough time to maybe wait base preparedness by 10 mm, I want that I really really want that Our budget is looking okay it's not looking great though with project Viking we could probably call in the country oh we need oh to do this you actually need project Viking and it looks like there's supposed to be another focus here but I guess that's not available for right now. Oh, and improve anti-air. Cool. Oh, let's go ahead and do this. Give us more base preparedness. It only takes two weeks, which is great for higher technicians. So we should be at 100% preparedness for that. So let's try this. Don't mind the debt. It's only 800 billion. It's only 0.8 trillion. That's all. Our children and their children and the children's children's people will pay off all in the name of space oil crisis and health care and education that's all awesome Whew. very nice point four day not bad not bad civilian spending jesus christ that's so high i mean i could try to get construction but funding, but we're not really... Oh, we're on 10% utilization. Imagine we were at 100%. Woof! Alright, next up we shall do... We gotta do Call in the Country get more money first. When encourages explorers set off on the journey with a lifetime, they shall not go alone. The American people have been disaffected and demoralized for far too long. President Glenn will address the nation and make them know that their country needs them. Our heroes of science and progress will inspire the nation, and our population spirits will shall soar with their rockets to greater heights than ever before. Public support will significantly increase... Great. And while we have a lot of time to get all these projects done... Ooh, 93%. Ooh, come on. Do you have any marked? Hold on, this is, hold on, this is glitched then. This is glitched. We want to upgrade them. We've done it, I think, twice now. And it still doesn't work. 
Come on, 93%. We gotta be doing well right there, right? 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 Crisis averted? Oh, crap. We nearly, nearly had a national tragedy today. At our launch of the newest manned mission, a rocket violently exploded on the launch pad. The crowd that was watching the launch could only look on with horrors. The pad became a burning fireball. Thankfully, our safety systems preve prevailed, and our astronauts made it with only a few injuries. But it was close. If we hadn't been so lucky, we would have been sending our heroes home in body bags. We, don't, we need to seriously reconsider our preparations to make sure this doesn't happen again. Dubai, despite suffering no casualties, there's been a large public outcry at this latest failure. We have to make sure that the people know that we take the safety of our astronauts very seriously. We cannot afford another accident like this one. Prepare a speech. Okay, so I'm going to use constant commands for this. Cause that's that's not fair. That's absolutely not fair. We've already done this twice for getting, like, those spacesuits. We spent at least 60 political power doing that. That's not fair. That's absolutely not fair. Ooh, man mission. We need another, I think, was it Ares and Diana? I forget which ones we need, but that's absolutely not fair to me. Or not us, just in general. But once it pops back up, we'll go ahead and do that. Oh, we need more money. You know what? I'm doing it now. Give me PPE 30. Cool. Just because we need the money. So I, I'm not sure what else to say about that. We're going to wait to get joint test programs, but if, if the thing doesn't work, then there's no point to have it available, right? I mean, I know that this mod isn't perfect yet. It has some bugs, but come on, man. Come on. Not cool. Oh, hey, look, only 100 billion separates our GDP from our debt. Come on, come on, come on. Get joint test programming. We got to spend more. And get 49 political power. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, my God, you takes forever. There we go. Phew. We got to do the program again. 275 million. Jesus Christ, that's so much. Because it takes so long to get all this stuff done. It takes so long. But it makes sense why it does take so long. Upgrade the infrastructure. We've accomplished more for spaceflight than most nations ever will, but we cannot lose our momentum now. It's time to fly even higher, and to do that, we need to improve the infrastructure that supports NASA. Larger runways will support specialized aircraft that can safely travel or transport critical rocket parts, and improved research facilities allow us to test larger rocket engines, fabricate parts even within more precision, and overcome the engineering challenges that have shackled us to Earth for too long. Improved rocket infrastructure will be unlocked. Well, that's cool. Uh, Beaconsfield, Iowa. Peggy Whitson had always been a wild child. Keith and Beth counted their lucky stars that they lived on a farm with plenty of room for their daughter to run around to their heart's content. Tonight, however, she sat completely transfixed in front of their old black and white TV set. Oh boy. These images never before seen by the public show the moon from the astronaut's perspective. The voice of the narrator crackled from the worn out speakers. The pock marked surface of our only natural satellite is coming completely is completely lifeless, singularly unsuited for human habitation, and yet man has set foot there. Eberhard Kölner became the first man on the moon in 62, planting the flag of the German Reich on the surface. But it won't be alone up there for long. The same Artemis program that gave us these images will soon send an American astronaut to plant the stars and stripes up there alongside it. Only when the program was completely done did Peggy stir. She rose slowly before turning to her parents. Mommy, Daddy, when I grow up, I'm going to become an astronaut. She spoke with an absolute confidence, stating as if stating a plain fact rather than an aspiration. Sure you will, but tonight it's already way past your bedtime, Keith Astronaut. Getting up to her... Getting up to get her settled into bed. It didn't take long, I'll tell ya. He said, or upon returning to the living room, I've never seen her focus on anything like that space stuff. Me neither, you know, I, I was about her age when the bomb hit Pearl Harbor. Tore up my world right up down. I don't think I've ever quite shook that feeling. I wonder if there would be a moment like this for her. Maybe she'll turn out different than me. Not too mu not too different, I hope. Keith smiled. Don't want her taking after her dad instead. Not like that, you bonehead. Different about the world. More hopeful. Who knows, maybe she will be an astronaut one day. Maybe. Maybe one day. Maybe. <clears throat> Only 165 billion. That's all. Yeah, I don't know. I, I still say we need more political power here. Like this is just—it's just not enough. It's just not enough to do the space stuff. Especially earlier on when you play as RFK to get to Glenn, you need to spend so much political power to get to make sure he doesn't die. So, I guess success costs has a cost to it. So. At this point, I'm no longer going to be investing in civilian spending. It's only 0 0.05 more. Never mind, 0.15. Holy crap, that's not good. Uh, that is but a number. Uh, that is but a number. And you only get 0 0.05 more. So, I mean, this is just... I don't know. This, I think, this still needs to be looked at a little bit more. You should be able to be successful. It shouldn't be too easy to do, but at the same time... It's got to be a little bit more give than this. Yeah, support weapons four. We're gonna go with not that. Helicopters, sure. Yeah, improved attack helis. Upgrade the infrastructure. <clears throat> Project Ares. 
So, the time has come, the crowning achievement of the American space program and the pinnacle of human technological achievement or development. Project Ares is ready for launch. Our crew travels with the prayers of every American and the eyes of the entire world upon them. We have proven we could equal the heights of the German space program. Now the American Eagle must soar for, to far greater heights. Our technicians, engineers, and launch personnel have been preparing for the mission for their entire careers. A red planet lies within our grasp, and we cannot let it slip through our fingers. The flag of the nation stands standing tall on Mars, millions of miles from our home shall reaffirm our status as the greatest country in the world. Godspeed, gentlemen. Start the countdown. Finally, let's claw back. The new frontier and assert our dominance once and for all will be unlocked. Well, we unfortunately have to get through these programs first, which costs way too much political power, which I think is ridiculous, like I said, multiple times in this campaign. So, I'll do whatever I can, you know, fairly, to get more political power, but, I mean, 0.29 a day. I mean, why? 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 I mean, that's nice. Artillery's nice and all. But I should be able, uh, technically, through the events, I have tried to pull funding away, but if you don't have political power, what are we supposed to do? Not much. Not much we can do. At least with this mission, we'll be okay. 7% approval rating, that's fine. We'll focus more on, like, the social aspects once we get to, like, the final focus and stuff like that, so. Or close to the final focus, whatever it is. Nice. Signal the testing. Cool. We are done with this part of the tree. Cool. For now. For now, of course. Uh, heavy aircraft, advanced biplanes, Lockheed SR-1, SR-71 Blackbirds. All right, we got Tesla rockets. Eighty-six percent prepared. Beautiful. What do we have else here? Five twenty-three 23 preparedness. Construct custom facilities. Holy cow. Well, we failed last, and we want at least fourteen percent of preparedness. Run diagnostic simulations, and then we'll just launch it. Because if we fail at one hundred percent preparedness. That's not cool, man. Hard work means handsome reward. Oh, look at this. To the office of the President of the United States of America. President Glenn, I hope it is with eager nature that you receive this message, as the ANSI's beginnings have already begun to bear fruit in the name and defense of this great nation. One of the largest teams of scientists has developed several innovations for the nuclear payload, allowing the United States to bear a stronger threat through nuclear force than ever before. Furthermore, as the program continues to expand on budget and finances, it has issued new concepts and designs for the future of the program, allowing for the beauty of the longevity to grace the United States. For the protection of all Americans, may we hope for greater success in the future. Cyrus Vance, National Security Advisor. A new and exciting victory for America. Fuel gain, capacity, but no more political power or money. Everything has a cost. So does that work? Is this supposed to be like... Upgrade to the suit? Is this supposed to be like a continuous thing you can upgrade, upgrade, upgrade? Because the way it says... The way it's stated with these words, upgrade to the suit? That doesn't mean like continuously upgrade it. It means... Like, you just, you upgrade to the suit. You get one upgrade. That's it. The eagle's landed. So, we got time to do, to do that, which looks great and all. But, let's go and do some stuff over here. Call, clean government is the best government. Well, successful in our program towards social reform, the administration has a new worry to focus on, which will continue to bring down public opinion of the government. The goddamn corruption found all over the place. Ever since Nixon, the American public has been worried sick over the possibility of public disgraces, such as the corruption found within Nixon's wrongdoings. Even worse, as Nixon's actions did not only affect the federal government as a whole, but specifically the RD party's stability. Failure is not an option with the American government, and it's about time we make sure of it. It's time to redredge up and throw out any remaining factors of corruption within our government. It is within our best efforts to make sure that we have earned the trust and respect of the citizenry before we experience chaos on a national level. In earning the trust, we can show them that we mean the best for them and not just about selfish politicians of the day. Cool. Hopefully that works. Let's get through this next three weeks and then maybe get some more political power so we can siphon military funding. I always love doing that. So doing this early on, actually, is this completely useless now? Because I don't see any options. We have the Iranian war, which... Shouldn't be here anymore, since Iran is actually pretty whole right now. The political landscape, I mean, I don't really care. Both parties are working well together. 31 Republicans, 13 are Democrats, rest NPP. So, having all these extra research points, doesn't seem like there's much to do. Oh god, look at that. Our debt is now greater than our GDP. Oh no. I'm not touching that. Nope. Military austerity. Hmm. Okay, actually lower construction spending. Uh, let's see. Just keep building more of this stuff. Good luck, guys. Good luck. We're all going to need you here for so we don't die. Ah, there we go. Uh, joint testing program. That's good. Quarter billion. We need more. Just more, 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 more. It's 100%. We should we should launch it. Dancing among the stars. Forward on to heaven. Great. 
Hey, we got 40 more political power. Finally, something good to come out of this. Awesome. Zero percent. We had a launch, successful launch mission, but we still have no support. Oh, no. A trillion of debt. Oh, boy. Hmm. That does not feel good. A speech in St. Louis. Uh, let's continue on with the focus first. Fanning up big business. Ah, uh, political power, yes. Although we've successfully moved forward with establishing future methods of dealing with corrupt actions of the U.S. politicians in the future, it would be dishonest to claim that we do not suffer from such disgusting acts of injustice in our government body already. The American people have already grown sick and tired of corrupt acts since the government... Uh, of the government with the blemishes of the past, and it is our duty to reach out to such weary souls and bring them hope. So we will launch a full-scale investigation into any hints of corruption that may spring up in our government, whether it's one lawmaker or another hundred. It is our duty to make sure that every bit of it is stamped out. The gross faults of the leaders of the U.S. in the past have allowed countless citizens to suffer under the burden of corruption, allowing for such low-reaching souls to prosper while the honest man falls, and we cannot allow such injustices to happen in a prosperous democracy anymore. A speech in St. Louis. Mr. President, they're ready for you. The diligent special agent said to President Glenn, who had been sitting backstage preparing for the big speech today. Oh, look at this. Mission Control. Uh, Glenn thought of the crowds of people willing to attend a public speech, especially one regarding the sheer corruption of the government, and how he may help change a, people's, a few people's days around for the better. A smile grew on the Ohioans' face. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome the U.S. President John Glenn to the stage. The governor of Missouri said before being rushed with exuberant cheers of the crowds as President Glenn emerged on stage, giving a wide smile and a wave of his hand to greet the following the growing crowd before him. <clears throat> Stepping up to the podium, Glenn began a speech. Good morning, my fellow Americans. Before we begin, we, may we offer a large thank you for your state's hardworking governor for allowing me here today. The crowd cheered his name with laughter and joy. Glenn eyed several poster boards made for the event, including one marked Shoot for the Stars with a rocket ship and a star next to it, giving the president a good laugh. Now, I know everyone here is anxious about our administration's new project, so allow me to explain, my dear Americans. It has been my duty to instill a sense of duty and empathy within every citizen, and while we've progressed tremendously in our goals, there remains a great obstacle in our path, corruption. Government officials who have become stooped down to a lowly level in an attempt to earn more for themselves will bring and will bring the consequences of such behavior into the federal processes. It is not right, it is not fair, and we mustn't allow it to continue any further. Whether it be the legislative branch or the executive branch, our administration stands ready to combat any form of corruption which seeks to plague our nation any farther. The crowd of Northerners and Midwesterners stood in awe at the president, but soon grew into loud cheers as the president went on. For liberty and justice for all, more approval before a, an election year. Smart. But it'd probably be better during an election year. But whatever. Come on, come on, come on. Our rocket has been covered. It's got to be successful. We got 100% preparedness. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Come on. Are you done yet? Mission rewards. Thank you. A AIDS? No, ADS. 85 research points, which mean nothing apparently now. Cool. And 18 public support. Well, cool, I guess. Not bad. Improved ceramic compounds. Sure, why not? Debt? No, that's a scary page. That's a scary page. Don't look at that. Diane. Oh, Aries program. Let's see. I forget how many we need to... Oh, crud. I forget how many we need to actually make this... It'll take three successful Diana program missions to achieve that goal. The Aries program. We need to take four. Oh, my goodness. It's going to take us up until 1976 to finish this. Because we failed once in Diana. Now, we, have, we failed once, and we were successful once. So... It's kind of a mixed bag. Come on, let's at least get to a trillion. At least to a trillion. Please, please, please. Yeah, if you look at this. It's all because of, well, kind of the oil crisis, which really sucks. Generous unemployment subsidies. That is the worst thing here. Employment subsidies. If we got rid of that and the oil crisis, I'm sure we could do very well. We don't need subsidies. Employment? Nah. Who needs who needs subsidies? No, 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 no. Public education doesn't cost much. Police doesn't cost much. Pensions cost us quite a bit as well. And public health care, eh, you could, you could maybe, like, deal with that, maybe. But I wish there was a way to get rid of the oil crisis, because at the time of this recording, there's no way to actually fully remove it. Kind of sucks, but oh well. Come on, why does this take so long? Hopefully we can just start launching the program as fast as possible. I will see, though. <clears throat> with this upgrade to the Gemini Mark II suit, if that's a continuous focus. So we'll tr maybe try it again, maybe? Because we have enough money for now, but we'll see what happens. Ooh, reaching us with crackdown and corruption. Yes, stability, more public support, more daily political power. Although our successes as an administration have been fruitful for the American people, the successes of the working man has revealed a blank of corruption ties towards current legislation. The continuous complaints to the general public about our administration revealed a key detail in their monopolist control over the market. The tax incentives present, present in the current legislation allows these massive businesses to continuously grow bigger, eventually giving way to the establishment of unfair business practices. Considering our achievements or our administration's aims at cutting out unfair business practices as well as the 
destruction of the corrupt elements of the government, it is without a doubt a necessity to repeal such tax policies, as it is unquestionable that these huge marketplaces have already sunk their fortunes into the pockets of representatives and senators vouching for them. For the sake of American fairness and equality, we must deal with this burden of society, or on society. Stability, cool. Get us that political power. I should have done that way before. I'm... Can we wait long enough? Uh, at this point, yeah, I'm, I'm done. 0.05 is not enough. It's just... It's grow growing too much. Now, I'm not going to cut civilian spending yet, but... I'm going to wait. 0.05 is just not much. It's just not much, especially since we can get 0.1. So... And I'm going to wait to see if we can get joint testing programs again, just because it's so good. It's 50 compared to this 40, and you get 50 million... Or 100 million more dollars, so... That ain't bad. Uh, we're still building. No, we're not. Oh, crap. Come on, man. I'm not going to do civilian spending. I'd rather spend more con for construction. Look at that. Beautiful. All right. Let's grab stealth technology. No. Anything else here? It doesn't really matter about this stuff anymore, so... Ease of access manufacturing. 64 days. Hey, we went from 65 to 64. Not bad. Not bad. Come on, and... Oh, come on, man. Come on. 6% approval rating. Yeah, I wish you could... This could... Wouldn't, like, fluctuate so much, but it is what it is. All right, so here's a test run. <clears throat> I'm going to invest more money into the suit to see if 86% goes any higher. And at the same time... You know what? We're going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm not going to spend any more money. Because if it's 86% now, if it goes up to 96%, then it's worth doing. One step at a time, though, the president allowed a hearty laugh in the early hours of the Washington, D.C. morning. You're kidding me, right? He asked Metzenbaum, who offered just as a wide of a smile as Glenn. Not at all, Mr. President. That senator looked like a kid caught with his hand in the cookie jar when he started hearing about some of the anti-corruption measures being drafted and put into effect into current federal processes. Needless to say, I think it was only about ten minutes after that he decided to tuck his tail between his legs and scamper out of the dinner party. Once more, the president and the chief of staff exchanged some laughter and smiles. Now, Mr. Mitzenbaum, I sadly have to inform you that this w that we will still have to start work at some point today. So let's get to the point. We still need to work on these reports found on the effects of some of the new policies. What do you have for me? Mitzenbaum unveiled a manila folder containing a variety of documents inside before giving it to the president. To put it bluntly, sir, the measurements of the administration put together and put into effect well work. A variety of officials in the government have recently deals they've made with less reputable organizations and businesses, and there have been reports that processes in the government are moving faster as by much as 105% in subcommittees. The president, though appearing confident and expectant over the news, was more than anything proud. Proud of himself, of course, but proud of his administration, proud of the work put forward, proud of the progress, and even proud of the officials that turned sides to clean themselves up. The government was one of the aspects of American society that needed to close the gap of empathy present in the modern day, and they'd managed to make progress in closing what seemed like an endless canyon of antitrust and deceit. Howard, how would you like to see, or like to take, take, take some time to see your family? In which we shall do empower the Senate and Ethics Committee. The U.S. government, having acted in the people's goodwill for so long, has an unfortunate un underbelly of corrupted history found with him. Through our executive branch, which has been in focus of, on corruption, we must expand our for focus towards the legislative branch as well. With such foul acts of criminality existing in the very lawmaking body of our nation, we must build new foundations to ensure that we can clean up any spots of corruption in the U.S. Congress. Having said that, it is our administration's prerogative to empower the Senate Ethics Commission, as well as a political body that can serve the country as both a watchdog and clean up service for any dark spots of corruption found within our representatives and senators. No longer will the acts of bribery and intimidation stain the legislative process of our constitutional republic. Instead, we shall remain acting as a strong, resolute, and morally sound government that acts purely for the sake of the American citizen. We'll see what happens. Now, this is an experiment we're doing right now together, because I don't want to see this happen again. Upgrade to the Mark II suit. Gemini Mark II suit, of course. Within a week, we shall know if this is bugged, or this is a continuous decision. If it's a continuous decision, not bad. I mean, I'll probably actually keep investing then. But if it's not, then that's a bug. Which we should all know about. 86%, it is a bug. It is a confirmed bug, so in exchange, I'm giving myself back 30 more political power. Oopsie. Because that was just a waste, right? Ooh, second military funding. Oh, Don't mind if we do. We want to get that done as fast as possible. 86%. So, it was a good thing to check it out. Let's get somewhere to 15, just in case. Just in case. It's 40 days, and then 40 days we're going to launch another rocket in 74, which means we're about halfway... To finishing Glenn's second term, which is not good, so we still might have to use console commands in the end to get this entire focus redone, which I think is just a bit ridiculous in my own mind. But that's just me. It just, to a degree, it means we have options, which are, which is cool. I love having options, but still, still.
Happy 1974, though, my friends. 74. We are only a trillion point one dollars in debt. That's all it is. What are the Germans up to? The Blue Order. An intriguing work of fiction has been gaining traction around the world in the past few weeks. Said novel entitled The Blue Order, authored under the pen name of Miles Lloyd, depicts a world in which a radical authoritarian politician runs for the American presidency in 32. Associated with the revived Bull Moose Party, this president, only known to the readers as the president, quickly proceeds to consolidate his power under the gods of defending America and rapidly turns the American economy into one fueled by preparation for an eventual war. With this in mind, he issues an ultimatum to Nazi Germany upon the remilitarization of the Rhineland in 36. If any further military movements will be met with a swift American reprisal. Upon the Anschluss of Austria, the president declares war on Germany under the guise of safeguarding liberty. History is then lost to the world for two decades. Upon the sunrise of some arbitrary day, the world is revealed to have been torn apart by the Second World War in Russia. The Soviets have all but lost Eastern Siberia into the American Republic, while the death of Bukharin throws the remainder into chaos. In Asia, the state of Japan lies under American supervision, having lost against them prior. In Europe, the British, Oz, Iberia, and Italy remain as the last major independent regions, having formed a strange alliance of democracy and fascism, with the Soviets being a previous member before Bukharin's death. In the remains of a mainland Europe, American public republics sit lock under sit under lock and chain. American control is not absolute, however, with various warlord states waiting for the sunrise to liberate their homelands. The president cannot live forever, however, and upon his assassination at the end of the novel, the sun begins a crossing the horizon as the destiny of humanity hangs in the balance. What kind of world is this? This is unbelievable. Harsh repression in Italy. Oh! This is unbelievable. Cracks in Italian fascism, huh? Reaching across the gap. Keep building, guys. Keep building. Ooh, military austerity. Ooh, do that. Do it in Ohio, too. That'd be good. So, let's do another focus first. Uh, banned lobbying. Lose access to some private sources of funding. Our public supports will increase significantly. Re decrease budget by 85 million. Restrict lobbying. Not all this funding is clean. Goes further divided. You know what? We're already screwing ourselves over. Let's do the banning lobbying. Finally, our administration has managed to put the boot down upon the lobbying groups that took the reins of our nation, unfortunately, so long ago. With enough work and effort put under by the cabinet, we've managed to unshackle American leadership and being able to lead however they want, not how lobbyists want. Now, however, we have them on the defense and we've waited long enough to finally begin pushing for our final move against their injustice, a complete ban on political lobbying within our nation. Injustices towards American people are wrought within these groups and far too much corruption is allowed to flourish in democracies in our world. And to imagine it with our nation is disgusting. We must make the final move as banning lobbying groups will hopefully be strong enough to push our leaders far back from any corruptive acts which may sway their acts in office. Instead, we shall act as more than just more than a just society without has without any restrictions from the scum of the lobbying. I apologize for my speech. I've been I'll be honest, like at the same time with this, I've been doing my RFK run at the same time, and I've been speaking so much, so much more than normal. Oh my goodness. I was just looking so far before we read this. It's looking okay. We're gonna siphon more military funding eventually. They're reaching across the cap though, the Congress. <clears throat> The legislative branch of the federal government, the lawmaking body of the U.S., and one of the most important pieces of the political machine. And yet, thought President Glenn, despite their incredible importance, we have to sink our hands deep into their processes to make sure that they stop any corruption from manipulating their jobs. Glenn paced in his office, looking at the paper stacked on his desk. The Senate Ethics Commission is going to change the face of the current legislative process in order to make sure that not a single senator will be acting without the greater interest in their hearts, but we now have to worry about the leader between a Democrat or Republican. Glenn sat down and took a look around, the phone on his desk, taking his interest first before taking a stack of social reform bills and sifting through them. Promoting a Republican will allow them to create a strong grip over the Congress and allow us to make it easier for Republican Senate programs and bills to navigate through the already effective process, helping out all those poor Americans who need our help now more than ever. He put the papers back on his desk before massaging his eyes. But the Democrats would probably throw a fit, after all. They're right when they say that getting rid of corruption within the government should not be a partisan effort, and knowing them, they're probably going to accuse us of pining blame for the corruption on them if we don't put a Democrat ahead of the commission. Glenn hadn't even noticed about that the difficult decision it had him tapping his foot in the usually serene office. Corruption isn't always one-sided. Ooh, the the influence of the Republicans and the RDs will increase it slightly. Different divided. Ooh, you know, if its influence is slightly, that's fine. We need these bills as soon as possible. We'll grow a little bit more united. I think that'd be okay. Let's see. We are working together. How do we? Can we get that any better? I mean, I, I really don't care too much, but that's fine. Yeah, that that's a lie. That's a lie. That's fine. Whatever. Joint missing. We're gonna wait. Two weeks left, that's fine. Oh, is the next research coming along? It's going, going, going. Banning lobbying. And a city on a hill, with a shining sun and a gentle breeze, a fair economy, and a happy and healthy American populace. We have, rest assured, done what we can to make sure that the U.S. is better off than when, it, when we came in, as every American politician ought to wish to do. And now, with our help, the leaders are no longer being clamped down by lobbyist schemes, and with that, we've already seen happiness within Americans. The effort put into social reform might have done more than enough to win over hearts and minds, and with our efforts to help the broken. We have managed to create a more caring society as well. Around the world, democracy has been harmed by the stains of dictators and corruption, but we have done what we can to make sure that the U.S. can stand as an example for abroad. America's 
is beautiful and Americans are worth people to care for. And now that we have, it is time to move forward in this history and look even more into the future, into the heavens above. Public, more public support and the Capitol on the Hill. Very cool. That's a little bit ahead of time. Uh, naval stuff. Asheville class. I love Asheville. Been there a few times. Launch it. Boom! Please be successful. Dancing among the stars. Great. We have 48 political power. Goes up to... Hey! We actually got 50 political power and 9% approval rating for now. So we're going to wait because just doing joint testing programs is probably the best one because of what you get from it. So that's pretty good. Ban lobbying, huh? All right, well, we lost a little bit of money, but that's fine. Public support will increase, we'll grow more unified, and a city on a hill. Beautiful. So if we do this again twice, political landscape, well, we're still working together somewhat well. Ooh. Oh, look at this. Great spending cap, Stephen military funding. What happened to the other one? There was the other one which said to encourage private investments. Oh, so that's, okay, so we banned lobbying, so we can't do that anymore. Mission rewards. Okay, so that was a second successful run of the Diana project. Okay, more support. Right, let's do it one last time. We need more money. Four hundred fifty-one dollars. Oh my goodness! So this is the third and final one we got to do for the Diana program. And after this, we're going to be spending money like out the wazoo for that. Ships. Death charges. Why not? One hundred five political power. Point two one a day. Not bad. Hopefully, we get some more political power through this last event. And we're definitely going to have to be raising the spending cap. Let's see, 200 million versus 75. Wow, that sucks. I invested too, way too much in technicians and blueprints earlier on. Yeah, that's just worth doing, raising the spending cap. Better industrial expertise. If you want to read about this, this happens usually time and time again. But I think we already hit actually the most innovative industry in the world, actually, already. So, like I said before, I wish there was a way in which we could... Like, further increase or get more benefits af after having a really, really, really industrious, like, industry or po well, maybe not poverty rate, but industry, academic base, just like small, minor benefits, slight benefits to show that, hey, we're still improving, we're still getting better, we're still, you know, raising our, raising the bar. So, I think that'd be great if that could be implemented, but, eh, we'll see what happens. And we finish with civilian factories very quickly. All right, then. City on a hill. Beautiful. And now we're done with those focuses over there. We're done with these focuses over here. You know what we're going to do. The Iranian Civil War Bill. Iranian Aid. We get more political power that way. But we shall have it all. Let's do the next gen delivery system. Having the industry to develop and to produce nuclear weapons is only the start. We must continuously invest in and refine our delivery systems. Accuracy, yield, and survivability are words to live by if we plan to win a nuclear war. Thankfully, the Pentagon has proposed a new generation of missiles, the Aero System, that should deliver on all these criteria, which we're not going to do at all. But that's fine with me. Build in Oregon, because we can. Anything else here? We always keep an eye. Joint. This is just so good to do. 50 versus 80, you get 200. For this one, you get 250. That's so good to do. I don't know why you choose the other ones, but the capital of the world. What's more, President John Glenn Look took some time out of his day to look past the curtains held over the window to the Oval Office. As the sun pierced through the clouds above the city, Glenn breathed in deeply with a large smile, though Ohio knew that it was going to be as difficult to see as a beautiful view as one he'd been taking in at that moment. But for now, without the worries of the future plaguing his mind, he allowed the songs of the birds to fill his ears, and the warmth of the setting sun to run over his face. The president had come, become, as so many around the country praised him for being throughout his presidency, happy. For now, Glenn knew that America was ready to take his next steps towards in the world. His administration was not going to last forever, and there were always still issues to handle in, the, in American society. He knew that he had to be done; that they had to be done all they could. After so many w years, work had been put through to close that sorrowful gap of empathy that was present for so many years in the sad in American society. The weak, the needy, and the downtrodden had finally received the work they needed to rise out of their pits of sorrow and pain. The people of America, both the able and disabled, all had a form of financial security to hopefully guide them into a healthier, happier, and brighter future. For once, the people of the United States managed to see that a part of the government had truly become freed of the reins of corruption, even if by the smallest amount. After such long periods of suffering for the Americans across the country, Glenn knew that now hope stood strong in the hearts of the citizens that he had guided to for his term in office. With such images of hope and greatness flowing through the president's mind, he had been reminded that not all of the world shared much of the similar stories of success and steps forward. The beaten down men, women, and children across Europe had suffered long in their continuous battles against their vicious oppressors. Similarly, even with a note of revenge in the U.S., the Pacific had remained embroiled in conflict, with man against man across the many islands of the sea. However, something changed. They had somewhere to look for hope, an example, a shining example of what they could be, what they ought to be, and the beautiful sight of the future head if they made sure that they could become as prosperous as the United States of America. Glenn had failed to respond to the opening of the door to his office behind him. Mr. President, are you all right? Metzenbaum called. Do you hear the thrushes sing, Howard? 
Political power and stability? Not bad, not bad. I'll, I'll accept that for now. I'll accept that. Let's see. Hey, our deficit to income ratio. Wait, did something change here? Because it was like 75-ish, I thought, for a while. 75%-ish. I don't know, but keep making those civilian factories. That should help out our GDP, hopefully, and stuff like that, so. Uh, no, oh, they must be done. What is that? Wow, Borman, he is looking old. Jesus Christ. I mean, it is 74. He was alive during between and 30s, and oh my goodness. The People's Fear. Ooh, counterintelligence stuff. Oh man, he is looking not good. Wow. 20%. Hey, not bad. You know what, let's take a look, test here. So, we have 54.48 billion in spending, right? What if I got rid of my army? 54.48. Let's, let's try an experiment. 54.48. So we saved a billion. 0.4 in terms of military spending. Was it worth it? No. So, it's probably not worth spending or destroying your army to achieve these ends where you're only, literally only left with special forces. <laughs> but, you know what, it's an experiment. Much like this run and the RFK run, just to see what would happen, you know? And that's good to know that we have figured stuff out here. So, I'm not sure how many people have actually done campaigns with Glenn or RFK, but hey, someone's got to do it, right? And make it public. And make it public. Improved anti sub helicopters? Cool. You know, we were researching subs, or not subs, but APCs. We were researching other stuff for so long and tanks, we just deleted all of them. <laughs> Next gen triad or blot, to blot out the sun. Ooh, ooh. our cost will increase. <laughs> to hell with cost. Even if politicians and scientists are convinced of the benefits of nuclear power, America as a whole remains wary of the atomic bomb with the bombing of Pearl Harbor seared into the public conscience. Public conscience. The process of winning the people over to the side of the progress will take some time and patience as we demonstrate the safety and benefits of nuclear energy via a program of fairly funded pilot reactors in several cities across America. Cost will increase. Tell me something I don't know. Ninety-six. Great. Let's get something something cheap. Because I want 100%, just in case. We already have one failure, and this is the last time, I think, that we need for this. In 15 days, that's all we need. Launch Diana 4. So yeah, this, we only, this is hopefully the last one we need. Diana 4. So now we got to do Ares three, four times, which is going to take a, quite a while, which will take us all the way up until the end of 76 to hopefully accomplish that. So, that means... At least another very long video after this, because... But that's fine. That's fine. I, I enjoyed TNO, but at this point, I played so much TNO, in, specifically in the United States, that it's kind of dragging down on me just a little bit, but that's fine. Whatever. Launch Diana 4. If, it, it better be... There we go. It better be successful. 156 political power. Becomes 206, finally. Slash military spending, which literally does less than a bill... Less than... Is that a billion? A hundred million. That's a lot. Less than a hundred... Effective a hundred million. Oh, around a hundred million, maybe. Ish. Whew. A score settled. So... Oh, look at this. Look at that. Our st the stars are ours. All around the world, millions of TV sets and radios all make it a model are tuned to the same broadcast. Each screen shows NASA's control center just minutes after the armistice has been confirmed touchdown. There's some small chatter between Aldrin and Michael and the mission controls that go through the system checks. The whole world watches with bated breath for the long-awaited American response to the German moon landing. Finally, after what feels like a lifetime of waiting, they see it. Live footage from over 200,000 miles away st starts broadcasting. Filmed from the base of the Artemis, the lunar surface stands outstretched beyond the lander, a gray blemish landscape feeding into the horizon. A lone figure emerges and descends from the module. Michael Collins, the first American on the moon, steps under the fine gravel and makes his pro proclamation. With his first step, America's finally ensured our place among the stars. News of Diana 3's success has left the public ecstatic. Wasn't this Diana 4? Uh, uh, even Glenn's harshest critics within the Senate remain silent in the face of America's victories. After some cel earned celebration, President Glenn prepares to address the nation in a televised speech from the front of Law White House lawn. Today, I address not only our own citizens, but the world. After years of effort, we finally brought Americans to the moon. This represents years of hard work from our talented team at NASA. None of this could have been possible without our engineers, astrophysicists, and countless other visionaries. No longer will we be bound by the failures of our Apollo program, as we now remain tied within this great race. Finally, I want to reiterate to everyone listening, this marks not the end of our long journey to the stars, but no, this is only but the beginning. More daily political power, stability, American society grows more unified, and more war support. Yes. Finally, at this point, we're finally seeing some good things happen in terms of political power. Stability's always been good. I mean, don't look at the debt. Uh, yeah, in social status, we're doing okay. Mission rewards, good. America's height lies with its astronauts. 95... Okay, there really needs to be something more for these research points. Because... 
Oh my goodness. So we need about 200? Yeah, 200 million more. Oh, I don't want to spend that much, but raise the spending cap. we got to invest in the Ares program now, because that is the last one we got to do, and we need four successful runs of this. Four! Recruiting Disney. Ooh. Our public support will increase, as well as nuclear stockpile. Why not? The benefits of nuclear power are immense, but so are the startup costs. Not every state or local municipality in America will be able to shoulder the costs of ensuing a safe and stable power supply for all of its residents. Thankfully. If the federal government can step in and fill the gap, both ensure a steady demand for expertise in the nuclear field and win a few votes along the way. It is 74, June 1st. Do we start campaigning yet? So after military fight, we're going to get the other one first, the behemoth. And over there, Mr. President, you can see the steam turbines being operated by a multitude of our plant's workers. The turbines using the process of extracting steam from the nuclear core of the facility and pushing it through to convert to energy. The director of the nuclear facility said to the jo President John Glenn, who looked onwards with a mouth that curved into an agape smile of wondermount. All around him, President Glenn admired the beauty that was American progress. The bright sparks of welding lit his eyes, while the massive turbines captured the President's imagination with the grandiose designs of the future. As the years moved on, one by one, Glenn can't help but recall the beauty of his childhood and 1928, when he flew in the first airplane alongside his father and looked outwards into the beautiful Ohio landscape with the heavens above him and the powerful figures beneath him, like a man watching over an anthill. Now, as I said before, Mr. President, the Dresden Generating Station and myself, Executive Director Ferguson, greatly appreciate your visitation to the reactor and the approval for its creation, as we hope to serve the great citizens of Illinois. The Executive Director said, shaking the President's uh, shaking the President from his nostalgia. Ah, yes. Yeah, speaking of which, I wanted to ask, how many people will this power power provide power for? President asked. Ah, oh, well, Mr. President, with the full potential of the facility is still being estimated. However, at startup, we believe the facility should be able to power all of Morris as well as a great deal of Chicago, resulting in current estimates reaching about one and a half million homes. The director's statement shocked the president. One and a half million people, one and a half million functioning households, one and a half million happy Americans will live another day in warmth and happiness thanks to the work of nuclear energy. Soon. The president stood within dreams of American households across the nation being able to thank the government for both providing a healthy and happy means of energy production. But an entire way of life with America standing at the top of the globe by taking a new step in the future of progress, glory, and potential. A new age for the U.S. was ready to begin. Uh, Mr. President, are you okay? Director Ferguson asked as the president stared in at a window into the facility. Mr. Ferguson, have you discussed an increase in funding? Ooh. And then I got a reactor. Oh my gosh. That's even longer? That's literally more than two months. Holy cow. But, you know what, if that's the case, we're going to end this episode here. Because, well, uh, we'll just start the next episode when we're ready to invest in the Aries program. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed this episode, guys. It's been kind of a trial run with this whole Glenn stuff. But regardless, hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we can hopefully launch a man to Mars. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.